Hello guys, so today we are going to discuss the problem divisible by 3 with problem code modulo 03 on code shift. So the problem statement goes like stack likes the number 3 a lot. He has two non-negative integers a and b. In one operation stack can do either of the two operations that he, that he can assign a is equal to modulo of a minus b or he could assign b is equal to modulo of a minus b. Okay. So Note that for modulus x denotes absolute value of x. For example, modulus of minus 7 would give us 7 and modulus of 4 would give us 4. So find the minimum number of operation after which at least one integer out of a and b becomes divisible by 3. The first line of input contains a single integer t denoting the number of test cases. The description of t test cases follows. So the only uh, each test case we are given two integer itself that is a and b so for each test case output we have to return a single uh, integer as output that is the minimum number of operations after which at least one of the integers out of a and b becomes divisible by 3 so these are the sample test cases that are given to us so let us try our algorithm on these sample test cases to begin with okay so what we are given now is is like we are given two integers a and b and what we can perform is we can either do a is equal to modulus of a minus b okay it should be yeah modulus so modulus of a minus b or we could say we could do modulus of a minus b for p okay and we have to find find the minimum number of operations and the minimum number of operations for which a or b would be divisible by p so if we look over here first condition would be suppose if we have a modulus 3 is equal to equals to 0 or we have p modulus t is equal to equals to 0 then answer would be 0 itself because already we have a number that is divisible by 3 suppose now we don't have it so for a we could have two conditions suppose a modulus 3 gives us 1 or 2 and same with b as well b modulus 3 gives us 1 or 2 okay and if we calculate number of permutations over here that we could get out of a cross b that would be 4 permutations so let us make this matrix as well suppose we have a modulus 3 b modulus 3 and we have the answer itself Okay, so a modulus 3 suppose we have it as 1, b modulus 3 as 1 itself, then 2 and 2, 1 and 2, 2 and 1. These will be the four permutations that we have. So if we look at the first two conditions to begin with, suppose in this a modulus 3 and b modulus 3 are the same. Okay, so we could say that a is equal to into n1 that is n1 is any number greater than or equal to 0 plus 1 or plus 2 that would be x so x could be 1 or 2 okay or uh, b could be 3 into n2 plus x x equals to 1 or 2 okay so now if you perform a minus b that would be equals to 3 into n1 minus n2 that would be a multiple of 3 okay since n1 minus n2 would be a whole number over here and we are taking modulus also over here so that is not an issue over here okay so for these two conditions we know in one operation if we perform a minus b we could translate one of these integers as a multiple of 3 itself. So for the remaining two conditions if we look 
as suppose we could say for the remaining two conditions we say 3 into n1 plus x x would be 1 over here okay n1 n2 still are whole numbers over here okay and b is equals to 3 into n2 plus 2 okay so suppose over here what we say what we are doing is we are performing modulus of a minus b now that would be equal to the modulus of b minus a also okay so we have to simply find out the uh, like uh, magnitude of a minus b or b minus a okay sign doesn't matter over here because we are performing modulo at the end itself okay so a minus b would give us 3 into n1 minus n2 plus 1 or we could say instead of performing a minus b we perform b minus a over here so that would give us 3 into n1 minus n2 okay n2 minus n1 plus 1 okay we are performing b minus a over here now b minus a and a both are having modulus as 1 if we do modulo with 3 so we have reduced these two conditions to the earlier two conditions that we have discussed so the answer for these two conditions would be 1 plus 1 that would be equal to 2 okay so let us summarize these conditions as well. Suppose if we are having a modulus t or b modulus t equals to zero, we simply return the answer as zero. But suppose if we have a modulus t and b modulus t that is not equal to zero, but they are still the same. So they are still the same that is they are equal to one or two. Then we say answer is equals to one because in one operation itself, we could perform a minus b and translate them into a multiple of 3 else we simply return out the answer equal to 2 for the remaining two test cases okay so let us guide on these on the sample test cases as well so for this 0 is already a multiple of 3 so we would print out the answer as 0 over here both are not a multiple of 3 but dividing them with 3 or taking modulus would uh, with 3 would give us 1 itself the so answer would be 1 that is the condition over here the second condition so let us look at the code as well for this problem so what we are doing is we are taking the test cases t as input then for each and every test case we are inputting two numbers that is a and b and for a and b we are uh, like calling the solve function and inside the solve function we are performing these three criteria that we have already discussed that is if a modulus 3 is equal to 0 or b modulus 3 is equal to 0 we return 0 else both are not a multiple of 3 but modulus of 3 and with a and modulus of 3 with b gives us the same answer that is 1 or 2 we return 1 for the remaining two test cases we return 2 so this we have already discussed over here okay so let us check this for the sample test cases to begin with so for 0 3 43 it would give us 0 and for 1 and 1 it should give us 1 so we are getting 0 and 1 so let us check this for the remaining test cases as well and see whether it passes all the test cases okay so it does passes all the test cases okay so we we'll see you in the next problem Till then keep coding and have a great time guys.